Good day everybody and uh, welcome back to DX Explorer for one more video. Uh, today is about some experiments that I've been doing lately with my early to 10 meters and thread wire, um, half wave and thread wire. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm curious to see if I can get better results. I might need a little help uh, from those of you that are um, have more experience with uh, with this kind of antennas. Uh, I had my 40 to 10 meters in the past and it, it was working great but because a lot of friends asked me to get on the 80 meters band so we can do some local uh, chit chat over here um, I decided to add the 80 meters band but I didn't want to pick the version uh, the shortened one uh, with the 110 micro Henry's um, inductor at the almost at the end of the antenna I think I have a video on that one in the past if you look in the in the past videos um, it that one works great but the only issue that I discovered is that uh, the bandwidth was very limited so I thought oh, I'm just gonna build a uh, <laughs> proper 80 meters half wave uh, end fed um, wire just because I'm trying to use the antenna um, as much as possible without an ATU um, I also build an ATU, uh, you, you have the video, uh, I think it's two or three videos behind and uh, it's a great help, it does help me to, uh, to tune the antenna in the exact portion of the band that I want to use but I would rather prefer uh, to use the antenna without an ATU, at least that's my, uh, that's my goal right now so I'm trying to cover as many bands as possible from 80 to 10 meters without using any ATU. If it's going to work I have no idea but anyway let's get on the paper I'm gonna show you exactly how I build the antenna right now and what else I have in plan but uh, if you have more experience on this maybe you can let me know and uh, help me figure out uh, on uh, how to get it to work a little better. Um, after that I'm just gonna show you some measurements and see where we are right now and who, who knows maybe in the future I can get it to work uh, the way I like it and I'll be back to show you the results uh, of uh, all the improvements that I've been trying to do. So anyway, let's get on the table really quick and show you what I've done so far. Now, I don't know how well uh, my marker is drawing, but anyway. Um, so what I have, I have the coax line coming into an RF choke. Uh, the RF choke, I tried a couple of uh, ways to, to do it. Um, the one that I have right now it's made with I believe six turns of um, RG58 coax around uh, a 140-43 uh, total width um, and from here I have about mm, a meter maybe of uh, RG58 coax and then I have the transformer um, the um, transformer it's also made on a 140-43 um, toroid I have three turns in the primary and um, 21 turns uh, the secondary um, I've been testing it with a nano VNA it works uh, really nice uh, this one about the RF choke actually I'm not so happy um, I only have about minus 25 dB right now uh, I had versions that uh, when I built it, I, I, because ch I experimented a lot with, with the RF choke, but I had a version that I was really happy about because from 3 to 30 megahertz I had uh, about minus 40 dB, something between minus 37 down to minus 44 dB and I was really happy with that one, but for some reason it was messing up my um, SWR <laughs> Uh, so I decided to uh, use this one right now just to test it and see how it goes. Um, the one that I have right now, it doesn't uh, give me the 60 meters band. The one that I had before, um, it was built differently. The, the one with the minus 40 dB attenuation. Uh, that one actually gave me um, the 60 meters band as well but it was messing up the 20 meters band and uh, I believe 40 meters band and so on so anyway from the impedance transformer I'm using a 2 meters wire and then over here 
I have a little coil that I've made with six turns around the 25 millimeters, uh, no, 22 millimeters PVC pipe. And then from here, I have the, the rest of the wire all the way to the antenna pole that's in the backyard. In here I have eight meters of uh, um, height in this side. Uh, the transformer over here, it's uh, somewhere on, under the roof of my house, but it's maybe about five meters, four or five meters, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, so this one is two meters, this wire. And uh, over here I have about uh, 20, no, sorry, 38 meters of wire. Um, minus or plus something <laughs> because I'm, I'm uh, still working around it and I'm adjusting it. So it can end up a little longer or it can end up a little shorter. Uh, the idea is that as it is right now with the coil installed, if I'm tuning the antenna on, sorry, 3.650 megahertz, then I would have it tuned also on, I'm just putting the bands of interest for me, 7.1 megahertz and also 14.2 megahertz now you will see in a little bit when we're going to jump on the nano vna that is not exactly like this but at least this is the theory <laughs> so yeah i am i'm not sure if uh, the way i'm building the rf choke uh, it has uh, an influence on the whole antenna but i believe it does just because i know that uh, last time when i um, build the rf choke differently it gave me a totally different uh, SWR on, uh, on most of the bands. Uh, right now with this one it doesn't seem to influence the SWR as much so either with or without it I seem to have almost the same SWR all over the place. Um, it's funny, um, I don't know exactly how it works but it doesn't um, change the SWR as higher or lower is just changing the frequency the the center frequency of that particular band so it's very strange i need to learn a little bit more about it <laughs> but uh, yeah that's what i have right now now another option would be to cut sorry to cut this uh, uh nice marker this one doesn't work anymore um to cut the coil um Tune the whole wire on three. Oh God! Let me find something else. Tune the whole wire on 3.55 megahertz. But you can't see anything with this one. Yeah. Uh, tune the whole thing on a 3.55 megahertz, and then uh, in the middle, cut the wire and place. Um, something from 200 up to 500 picofarads uh, capacitor something about uh, 2 kilovolts or 3 kilovolts something big <laughs> that will handle well any di electrical discharges into the antenna um, and apparently that one it's even better actually than using the coil and of course it's easier to adjust because you can uh, at the beginning you can put a variable capacitor raise the antenna up and uh, play around with the variable capacitor of course you're gonna ha have to keep taking the antenna down and test different uh, um, capacity values but uh, you get to bring the antenna as close as possible where you want i haven't tried this one yet but if uh, i keep uh, experimenting with the coil and i'm not happy about it um, i'm gonna have to try the capacitor uh, trick and see if that one works well but uh, what the capacitor does is basically the same thing as the compensation coil. Uh, you will tune the antenna on 3.55 without the capacitor. Um, you cut the antenna in half. Once you cut it in half and you add the capacitor, instead of 3.55 uh, 3 you will have again 3.650 or 3.70, something like that. And then the rest of the frequencies will be the same 
7.1, 14.2, and so on. Um, to build the, the compensation coil, right now, as I was saying, I'm using the uh, 22 millimeters um, PVC pipe. I also tried 30, I think this one is 31 or 33 millimeters. Um, I also played around with the number of turns. I used five turns, six turns, seven turns, eight turns. <laughs> I was cheap, I keep changing coils, but um, yeah, I'm still can't get it to work um, as I would like it to. So we'll see about that. For the capacitor, I prepared this uh, thing that I want to use. Let me see if I can focus a little bit better. Yeah. So I prepared this one. It's a piece of uh, plexiglass with two screws, which I'm going to shorten. But um, in here I have these two uh, copper uh, pieces that I would solder a capacitor between them, cut the extra wire. And then uh, once the antenna is finished, I would insulate it um, waterproof it and raise the antenna back up and use it. <laughs> uh, the only reason why I'm not trying to uh, use the capacitor and I would prefer much more the coil is that because the coil is not as sensitive to um, electrical discharges into the antenna as the capacitor would be. So anyway, um, let's try. See. <laughs> see the measurements on the nano vna right now so uh, this is how everything looks at the moment uh, let's uh, jump a little bit on the 80 meters band 3.5 to 3.8 by the way i calibrated the nano vna uh, before so <coughs> this is what i have right now um, around 3.5 megahertz i have about 2.9 to 1 swr the lowest one it's somewhere around uh, 3.69 3.7 almost but around 3.692 it's uh, 1.3 to 1 and then if I go up to 3.8 megahertz, it's somewhere about uh, 1.7 to 1. It's not bad, it's usable. Um, I'm using it right now, but I would like to get it better on the 80 meters band. And I wonder if uh, maybe the reason that it's not as high, uh, it's just eight meters high might have an influence on the antenna i have no idea but i just can't get it higher than i already did because um, it's a little hard for me to do that anyway let's jump on the uh, 40 meters band right now let's go on seven seven point two because in europe we don't go up to seven point three but I have about 1.4 to 1, uh, around 7 megahertz, and as close as I get to 7.2 megahertz, it's going to drop down uh, to 1.2 to 1. Um, but if I extend it a little bit, let's say 7.4, we'll see that, yeah. I think the lowest SWR is somewhere around 7.2 even though it should be a little lower 7.1 so the compensation coil that I've made is not quite exact or maybe it's just the influence of the RF choke that is changing this because <laughs> um, when I tuned the antenna without the RF choke it was a little lower uh, the SWR lower in the in frequency I mean um, around 7.1 and now it seems that the lowest SWR it's around 7.2 so we'll see now let's go to 14 megahertz and stop 14.35 in here it looks all right but in here it's lower and it was supposed to be higher so everything is a little strange <laughs> 
that's exactly why I don't understand. But anyway, the lowest SWR, which is great because I'm started doing FT8 and FT4 lately, so <laughs> I don't mind if it's a better SWR on the lower portion of the band. But I have about one to 1.1 1 .1 to 1 uh, around 14.07 uh, megahertz, and it goes up to about uh, let's see, 1.5 to 1, I believe. Uh, about 1.4 to 1 around uh, 7.35 megahertz so it's not bad I mean the um, how do you call it the SW is, is not bad I'm gonna go back uh, 3.5 megahertz and stop uh, let's say 16 megahertz just so I so again I have it here around 14.125 and then I have it here around 10 megahertz because I also get um, th the 30 meters band uh, the SWR here the lowest one is about 1 to 1 so it's not bad I have good SWR uh, in here 7 yeah 40 meters band 7.250 anyway and then it goes straight to the 80 meters band but using the uh, older um, RS choke is the one where you actually uh, wind two uh, wires um, 12, turns, 12 turns on one side and then 12 turns on the other side and then you connect them together and input and output and yeah with that one um, the SWR used to drop and I used to get the 60 meters band as well um, but then it was messing up my SWR on the 40 meters band or on the 20 meters band and of course the other bands after um, it was changing the, the center frequency of where I wanted the SWR so it would mess up uh, I'm just gonna give an example because I don't remember right now but for example 20 meters would go higher 40 meters would go lower in frequency but the, the SWR was exactly what I didn't want it to be so yeah but I was getting the uh, the 60 meters band so I'm gonna try some more experiments with that one but yeah in any case if by any chance you have any idea and if you built it and if you tried it in the past and uh, you have ideas on, on how to, to get it to work uh, a little better and manage to uh, tune it uh, properly uh, like if I if I'm just gonna give an example let's say that this is the the 40 meters band I don't know how well you can see but and this is the SWR I could get it with the older one from uh, the, the 40 meters band uh, and fed uh, half wave I could get it to one to one in here in the center and I had about 1.2 to 1 um, around the, the edges of um, lower and the, the sorry the lower and the upper part of the band but let's say it's not going to be 1.2 to 1 it's going to be 1.5 to 1 here and the same in here I would be happy if I had that uh, but I'm that's that's what I'm trying to achieve in all the bands from 80 to 10 can I do it I have no idea but can I try well definitely yes so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do maybe with a little help I'm going to do some more experiments some more tests and see if I can get it to work this way but the idea is that I'm trying to uh, have the center frequency as it is here uh, 3.650 or 3.70 7.1 uh, 14.2 megahertz if I can get that I'll be one happy man the idea is that to use the antenna without <laughs> an ATU so i don't know if i'm going to be able to do it but i'm going to try i guess that's it for today thanks for watching i'll see you next week until then 73 and happy dxing